Roll for Crit presents How to Play Arkham Horror in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Arkham Horror is the cooperative game that pits you against the Elder Gods and other Lovecraftian monstrosities. That's right, it's that game. I don't think there are any other ones. Third edition designed by Nikki Valens and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Your goal in Arkham Horror is to complete your chosen scenario centered around an ancient unknowable elder god by accomplishing the goals laid out for you on a set of cards known as the Codex. Usually this will involve researching clues, warding off doom, and making lots of dice rolls known as skill checks. Each player will begin with a character card along with some items, spells, and or money and their character figure which will begin in a specific section of the board according to the scenario. Your character has a unique ability, a set of skills, and a health and sanity level. Your health level is lessened by damage tokens and your sanity level by horror tokens. One player will be designated as the leader of the group. Then, players take turns in any order they want, each taking two actions at a time. These must be two unique actions. You cannot perform the same action twice in the same turn. Let's go over all the actions. First is movement. The board is split up into different neighborhoods of the city on different tiles. Each region then has its own spaces named after that neighborhood's landmarks and are connected by street tiles. During a standard move action, your character can move up to two spaces, following adjacent spaces in any direction. If you've got money, you can also spend a dollar to move a third space, or two dollars to move two extra spaces. If you don't got money, you can perform the Gather Resources action, which provides you with one dollar from the supply. The trade action allows you to exchange cards or tokens such as items, spells, money, clues, or remnants with anyone else in the same space as you. The focus action lets you acquire a focus token for a specific skill. Each character has the same set of five skills, each one with a different number value which are important for performing skill checks. Each focus token increases the value of a skill by one. You can't have more than one focus token per skill, and you also can't have more focus tokens than your character's focus limit number. Pretty much every other action available to you on your turn requires a skill check, so let's go over what that means. A skill check will relate to one of your five skills and will be indicated by the symbol relating to that skill. To perform the check, take a number of dice equal to that skill's value and roll them. In order to pass the test, you need to roll a five or a six on at least one of those dice. Effects from various cards focus tokens or text from the skill test itself may give you plus one or minus one to your test, instructing you to roll more or fewer dice. You can also spend clues or focus tokens in order to re-roll one of your dice. Some skill tests may also give different results depending on how many of your die rolls were successful. So here are all the actions you can take on your turn that involve skill tests. Ward. As the game goes on, doom tokens will show up in various spots on the board. In order to get rid of this doom, go to that space and perform a ward action by making a skill test with the lore skill. Each success lets you remove one doom token from that space. Removing two or more in the same test rewards you with a remnant token, which can be used to help with various spells and encounters. Depending on the scenario, doom tokens could have different effects, but frequently you'll be dealing with anomalies. If there are ever three doom tokens in a single space, or five doom tokens in a single neighborhood, an anomaly opens up in that neighborhood which is bad. The anomaly stays there until you rid the neighborhood of all its doom tokens. Research. During the later encounter phase of the game, you'll be receiving clue tokens which you'll want to add to the scenario sheet in order to progress through the game. To do this, you'll make an observation test, placing one of your clues on the sheet for each success. Attack. If you're in a space with a monster, you can attack it by making a strength test against it. By choosing to attack the monster, it will become engaged with you, meaning it moves to in front of your character sheet. Monsters also become engaged with you anytime you enter their space on your turn. Make sure you check the back of the monster's card before attacking to see its attack modifier, which may affect your roll. For each success, you deal one damage to the monster. You can also use item cards, such as weapons, during the fight, as long as they don't have more than two hand symbols between them, or spell cards. To use to use spell cards, you must receive a number of horror tokens or spend remnant tokens to prevent this. If you deal damage equal to its health value, it's defeated and sent to the top of the monster deck. There may also be listed rewards such as remnant tokens. If you're engaged with a monster, all you can do on your turn is attack, focus, or evade. Evade is the final major action which you can perform by making an observation test, modified by the observation modifier on the back of the monster card. For each success, you disengage with one monster currently attached to you. You can be engaged with multiple monsters at a time, so you'll need a success for each one in that case. The monsters go back to their space exhausted side up. If you successfully evade, you get to perform a bonus action on the same turn. 
On your turn, you can also use any card or ability denoted by the term action. Once all players have taken their two actions, you'll move on to the monster phase. Now the monsters on the board get to wreak their spooky havoc, depending on where they are and what special conditions apply to them. If a monster is ready, meaning showing its ready side on the board, it acts according to the text at the bottom of the card. Hunters move toward and engage players that meet specific criteria. Patrols move toward specific locations. And lurkers stay where they are and carry out some other nasty ability. Monster cards can have a variety of keywords on them, so read up. How many spaces a monster moves when activated depends on its speed value. As soon as a monster enters an investigator's space, they stop and engage said investigator. If any monsters are engaged after the activation step, then they attack the player they're engaged with. No dice rolls this time, they simply inflict harm as indicated on the bottom of their card's exhausted sides, either through damage, horror tokens, or both. Finally, any monsters that are still exhausted flip to their ready side and engage if possible to finish off the monster phase. Next up is the encounter phase. All investigators that aren't currently engaged with the monster take turns, starting with the leader and going clockwise, drawing one encounter card from the deck matching the location they're in, either a region or a streets card if they're in between, or an anomaly card if they're in a neighborhood with an anomaly. Find the section of the card that matches your specific location in that neighborhood and read that section only. This will provide you with a quick, spooky adventure, usually followed by some type of choice or skill test opportunity, which could result in rewards or disaster. The symbols above each space name give you an idea of what type of resources you can generally hope to be spending or gaining from encounter cards in that area. Some spaces, such as the general store, will allow you to interact with the display, a set of five cards from which you can occasionally interact with to receive or purchase new items by spending money equal to their printed cost. Anytime you get a card from here, it is replaced with a new one immediately. There is no limit to the number of cards you can have in front of you. Some cards may tell you to gain a specific type of item, an ally, a blessed, cursed, or dark pact card. Just find the appropriate deck and search for the card as instructed. You might also draw a special event card if there are one or more clues in your region. If you manage to succeed at the test on these cards, you get to take one or more clue tokens from there for use on a future research action. After completing an encounter, place it face down at the bottom of its neighborhood deck or face up in the discard pile for the event deck if it's an event card. If you did not successfully complete an event card, it gets shuffled back in with the top two cards of the neighborhood deck it was in. Finally, we've got the Mythos phase. Now each player in clockwise order takes turns drawing two tokens from the fabled Mythos Cup, not provided, please make your own, and revealing them one at a time. Depending on the token, a different effect will take place. If it's a blank, nothing happens. If it's a Doom symbol, discard the bottom card of the event deck and add a Doom token to the area on that card denoted by a Doom symbol. If that neighborhood features an anomaly, then the Doom token goes to the Scenario card instead, which is usually bad. A monster symbol means you draw the bottom card of the monster deck and spawn it in the appropriate location on the board. A newspaper symbol means you draw the top card of the headline deck and read it following its instructions, which are usually bad. A clue symbol lets you draw an event card and shuffle it in with the top two cards of the appropriate neighborhood deck. Also, add a clue token there to go with the card so you can try to gain it on a future turn. If a gate burst occurs, check out the top card of the event deck and add a Doom token to each space of that neighborhood. Then shuffle that card along with the entire discard pile back into the event deck. Then there's the Reckoning symbol, which could have various effects triggered by the scenario or other cards you find along the way. After players draw their tokens, they are removed from the cup until the cup is empty, at which point it gets immediately refilled. If the game ever refers to an unstable space, it's the space on the top card of the event card discard pile marked with a doom symbol, or the starting space if that discard pile is empty. If your character ever becomes delayed, their piece gets turned sideways, then they must spend an action on their turn to stand their piece up and become undelayed again. If your character ever receives damage or horror tokens equal to their health or sanity levels, or if an effect says that they're devoured, they're dead. Remove them from the game along with all cards in their possession and choose a new character who will start on the original starting space at the top of the next round. Play continues through the action, monster, encounter, and mythos phases until players have either completed the scenario or lost according to the instructions in the codex. In conclusion, move, test, ward, attack, research, encounter, stay safe, and stay sane. That's Arkham Horror in a nutshell. Did you get all that?